It's no coincidence that you're watching this video right now. God has some truths He wants to reveal to you. And through watching and receiving and hearing His voice, He will transform every part of your life. There's one or two things that I want to bring to light today in terms of authority. And I'm talking specifically about authority in the church. Amen? Amen. And um, authority in the church, right? So, and church structure with, you know, authority and church structure, if you will, if that makes any sense of what I'm trying to get at. Because a lot of folk, um, you know, when, whenever we say authority, I've touched on it the one night with the students, but whenever we say authority, people often think we think exertion of power. In other words, I exert my power over you. Well, that's not authority. That's manipulation. Right? So authority means I am in charge over. Now, let me explain the two kinds of authority. There's authority over my life, meaning I'm the prophet of my own life. But you're also the prophet of your own life. You understand what I'm saying? So you determine what's going to happen in your life as much as I determine what's going to happen in my life. Okay? So now, but then there is the authority within the body of Christ. Now, I'm, that's the authority that I'm going to be talking about today. But before I can speak about that authority, I have to give a little bit of an introduction as to the authority that we've been given as individual believers, which is granted to all believers. Now, as much as it's a done deal, it's also progressive. And I don't mean it progressive in a, in, a, in a political sense. I mean it's progressive that we grow in faith. You follow what I'm saying? As much as we grow in faith, we grow in authority. Right? So what do I mean by that? All of us can heal the sick, but are we all healing the sick? Jesus called all of us to go out and all the world preach the gospel, and these signs shall follow them that believe. And the primary thing there, I would believe, is healing. So in other words, the gift of healing, I believe, has been made available to all believers. Not some, but all. But here's the deal. When I first started praying for the sick, you know, it was no big deal getting back problems and back issues healed and some headaches and a few other things. But I had no faith to get cancer healed. This is honest chapter 10 verse 1. You understand what I'm saying? So I had no faith to get cancer healed. But now I do have faith to get cancer healed. It makes sense. I can pray for somebody with cancer and they get healed. And I've done it many times. But when I first started out, I didn't necessarily have that faith. I had that faith when I was with another man of God that's been walking in that and been seeing that. But when I was on my own, outside the sphere of influence, besides that men or those men of God, my faith was not as strong for that specific thing. You might have faith... To get $500 a week in your bank account. But it doesn't mean you have faith to get $5,000 a week in your bank account. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Just practically speaking. So as much as our level of faith is not the same. Our level of authority is not the same. And when we talk about authority within the church. Even though it's a different subject from authority in our lives. We've got to understand that there's a correlation. So, when I speak about authority within the church, I'm not talking about having authority over people. That's not what the Bible's talking about. But it is talking about having authority over the stuff within people's lives. In other words, somebody can have, let's say, cancer, and they, they can be healed of it. But if they don't come to me that have authority over it, they might not be healed. Not because I'm superior, but I've walked a road of authority, so to have authority. But when they step outside from the sphere of influence that I have in the realm of getting people healed with cancer, they might not have that same benefit. So we've got to understand it in that context, not in the context of exerting power over another individual or exerting 
dominion over another person, but rather exerting authority over serpents and scorpions and stuff in people's lives, if that makes sense what I'm getting at. In other words, things that is ruling over people's lives, not ruling over the people. Does that make sense what I'm saying? So we got to understand it in the right context. Now, I'm just saying this for explanatory purposes. Let's go to the book of Matthew. And I'm going to explain something from the book of Matthew. Now, I want to, before we read this, I want to explain something. Matthew chapter 22. Many people have heard the word calling, and, they, and we automatically think that the word calling or the term calling is the same as the office or the ministry gift, and it's not. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 22. And this whole thing, before we speak about um, many are called, but few are chosen, we have to read what context Jesus has set that in. Otherwise, we'll get distracted. Because sometimes, see, we can get the correct context of a sentence or a verse, but it didn't mean we have the correct context of the chapter, because the chapter tells a bigger story. You understand what I'm saying? So this is one of them cases. So let's go to Matthew 22. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to pick it up at verse 7 for the sake of time. I'm not going to read everything. But basically what it was is there was a king that invited many people to a wedding feast, but they would not come. And then let's pick it up in verse 7. And the king was enraged when he heard this, and he sent his soldiers and destroyed those, okay, am I, yeah, those murmurers. And burnt their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding feast is ready, but those who are invited were not worthy. Now, listen, pay attention here. When you read up to verse 7, it was about people that was invited. In other words, called or chosen or elected, but they didn't respond. So you've got to get the context of it. Otherwise, you get it, a very distorted view of what this is saying, right? Then verse, so in other words, the many were called, but they didn't answer. Right? Verse 8, then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Verse 9, so go to the main highways and lead out to the city, that lead out of the city, and invite to the wedding feast, as many as you find, and those servants went out <clears throat> into the streets and gathered together all the people they could find, both bad and good. So the wedding shall, <clears throat> forgive me, the wedding hall was filled with dinner guests sitting at the banquet table. But when the king came in to see the dinner guests, he saw a man there who was not dressed in wedding clothes. And he said, friend, how? Did you come in here without wearing the wedding clothes that were provided for you? It says in the Amplified. Now, the reason the Amplified says it like that, in the Jewish custom in those days, the, the, the host would provide the wedding clothes for each guest. That was the custom, right? Like, so, that was, so in other words, it was given you, but you wouldn't put it on. In other words, it's not a matter of you dressed unworthily. It's a matter of you did not use what was given you. So pay attention to that because it's very important to see that. And actually the Amplified here is correct in saying that even though it's in brackets and it's added. And the man was speechless and without excuse. And then the king said to the attendants, Tie him hand and foot and throw him out into the outer darkness in that place where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. For many, Now I want you to see, when the Bible says that somebody will be thrown out into outer darkness, it actually means they're expelled from the gift of salvation. So this calling here is not talking, uh, I'll just make it real straightforward. It's not talking about the fivefold ministry. It's an invitation for people to follow Jesus. In other words, it's an invitation to become a disciple of Christ. Comment down below what God just revealed to you. Share this video with somebody that is in need to hear it as God is sharing with you. 
Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us.